Well, now, this morning, as we're going to see, you may not see that right away, how the devil is going to be crushed. But somewhat through that, we're going to stand, we're going to read carefully to see exactly what's happened to uh, Cain and his legacy. And thank you, Sister Vanessa, for defining the word legacy for us. It's a will inheritance. So this is uh, so we could say Cain and his uh, inheritance and his will, the consequences, because the legacy is something people will live for you. Or and uh, so this is what basically Adam and Eve left for us. This is a place of sin, and it's getting worse, 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 and somehow. But through that, we're going to see something how God, although the word grace never said there in Genesis 4, but we're going to see the grace of God. Now, something we have to understand, there's a lot of commentary about Genesis 4. Everybody gives a reason why, what's happened to Cain, what's happened to Abel, what's happened to everybody. But one thing I would like before we start, can you turn your Bible with me in uh, Genesis 4, verse Genesis 4, verse 3. This is to set things for us here. Genesis 4, verse 3. Uh, by the way, somebody was telling me Sister Vanessa's mic wasn't working. I hope uh, the AV people will not, could make sure people outside listening to us. Thank you very much, yes. Uh, so can somebody read that for me, Genesis 4, verse 3? Yeah, you could go, Sister. Yeah. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Thank you. The word I want you to uh, pay attention to is uh, the expression, and in the process of time. What do you think that means, in the process of time? Yeah. So, don't read Genesis as chronology. There's no chronology in what you're saying there. As a matter of fact, from Genesis 1 to 11, you know how many years pass? 2,000 years. So, uh, then Moses compressed all that in 11th chapter. So that's what's in the process of time. So we don't know, but because people live for 938 years, 900, so there's a lot of time passed. So as, what you're going to see there, they're not happening one after the other one. There's a long space when those things happen. So with that in mind, by the grace of God, let's go to the lesson. So, the lesson is again, as we say, Cain and his legacy. The memory text said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you. Guess what? But you should rule over it. Amen. Can we rule over sin? Can we overcome sin? Ah, so the possibility is there. The, the door is open for us to overrule sins. So, but wait, that, the reverse is true too. Thank you, Sister Vanessa. The, the reverse is true. You could let sin in or you could overrule it. Now, to overrule sin, now this is where Hebrew will say we need Jesus. We need Jesus for that. And this is the grace of God. Now, this is what we're going to see in the whole saga here, where the good news is there's God's grace. Because what we see, you see rebellion, you see consequences, but we see also the grace of God. See, God will never let us hang, hang out somewhere without any hope. God will never do that. And he tried his best with Noah, uh, with, sorry, with Cain. But he didn't want anything to do with that. As my fact said, I'm going to hide. Yes, Sister Vanessa. Yeah, Brother Ben. Um, as you read that memory verse, you know, it came to my mind there. Sin lies at the door. Now, I, I usually like to go to the physical, you know, to see. Sin lies at the door. When somebody or something is at the door, who decides what is, you know, 
who, who make the decision? It is who the door belongs to. Make the decision whether that thing is going to come in or stay out. You know, that's why I believe the memory text say it there. It lies at the door and it's desire to rule over you. Yeah. But, but you should rule over it. Yes. Make the decision because Make, yeah. it's at the door. It's not in as yet. Yeah. You know, so. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, we all get that thing. So, uh, we are our fiber. We are, mm -hmm. the thing is that the thread in our life, in our mm -hmm. body is mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. It's easier for us to sin. This is what we think about. That's all we do. That's why I said the desire of sin lies at the door. At, at our, that, is, that door means our soul. This is a door means our heart. The sin is there. And if you don't watch it, he will get you. Because the devil never sleeps. We will sleep. We, <laughs> we take time off. But the devil never takes time off. But God said to Cain, but you could, we could overrule it. This is that hope we have. And with that's what we're going to study here. Now, Cain and Abel. As you know, Adam and Eve sin, and unfortunately, God has to do what? Yeah, God has to let them go. I won't say kick them out if you want, but definitely, so they have to be out. And God put what? Some angels with a, a, a sword, with a flaming sword, for them not to enter. Why God? Can you see? God grace there. Yes. Can somebody tell me that? Forever. And those of us, those of you listening to us too, <laughs> I believe we have a device you could, you could talk to. Go ahead. Who wants to tell me where is God? Where is God grace there? So God kicked them out. Where is God grace? Because brother Ben, the text say the wages. God told them in the day you eat of the fruit you will die, but they didn't die that day. So I see the grace of God there because they, God could have chosen instead of kicking them out it could have been their life right away on the spot you know but the grace of God was given right there yeah now do you yes brother Lindley can we have a second mic some young people could do some exercise back and forth it would be good for you <laughs> Yes, Brother Ben. Yes. I want to also say God's grace was shown. Just imagine if Adam and Eve got back into the garden and then eat of the tree of life. And then you continue to be living in this sinful, deformed body. You know, like over continuous because it would have been eternal. Ah, amen. So God amen. was graceful. Amen. You see, that's the thing there. At the first view, you will see why well, God was a little bit harsh to kick them out of the garden. But that was for their own. Somehow, that was for their own good. Because God will imagine, as Brother Lenny said, you will live 900 years with a cancer. You're suffering every day. You remember even the horses sometimes, horses, when their accident happened, they killed them right away to end their life, their, their misery. But basically, this is what, and I, I know Shakespeare, there's a place, oh, sweet death, why don't you come? And so this is sometime to, now I know when people die, we say, you cannot say that, that person, well, maybe it's good for him to, a, a better for him to die, because they say, no, don't ever say that, by the way, to people. But in reality, this is what God does for us by shortening our lives. Because imagine you, can, you cannot die, but yet you cannot be healed. See, God is a good, good God. So somehow he managed among that mess Adam and Eve created to find a way to save them. Then somehow Adam and Eve, being couple, they were having kids. The first one is Cain. Now, Cain came in. You remember Genesis 3.15? God said, going to get that seed will crush the head of, of, of Satan. And Eve said, aha, this is it. Cain will be. Cain is that seed God promised. And somehow, 
He has more of fact, Cain's name is what? What's the meaning of Cain's name? Those of you who study. Possess? Okay. I, I acquired? Because his name was almost the same name with Yahweh. Came from the original text saying, He's the Lord. That's what Eve think, thought he was. So, then came Abel. As a matter of fact, in, in, in the original text, he, he, uh, the, the, uh, the spelling is H-E-B-E-L. Hebel. You know what that means? B- vapor. And that's the same word. It is as it's used, all is vanity. Vanity. So that poor Abel came, and said, ah, yeah, okay. Thank you very much, second kids. You know, the first one, that's the one you take 50 pictures. And then the second one came, barely take a picture. And that happened to me with my daughter. I mean, I have about a thousand pictures of her. I remember I used to take 24 pictures one day, send it to be developed. When my son came in, yeah, okay, we took some pictures. So, and that was Abel, poor Abel. But now, this is it, brothers and sisters. As a parents, try not to do that because the Bible doesn't say that, but it seems Eve has a little bit tendency to, to, to like Cain, to favor Cain over Abel. Because he was the firstborn, and with that name, and Cain happened to have a few chips on his shoulder. Everything belongs to me. I acquired everything. I possess everything. I am the first one, and therefore you're obliged to bow before me. And Abel came in, and that poor man, that poor boy, he didn't say anything. He didn't talk in the Bible. You don't see, Abel hasn't said anything. Always came talking. So be careful when we do that, not to have any. I know it's hard sometimes, okay, uh, because this is what they call uh, misguided expectations. You cannot look at your kid to say, well, that one will be good, that one will be bad. Don't do that. Because if, he, if the kids keep listening that, you never know. He will happen to be what you want him to be or her to be if we do that. So try as a parent to avoid preference among your children. Because this is what's going to happen. So can then decide, I am the first one. I am the possessive one. I, everything is for me. Basically, I acquired everything. And Cain happened to be what? A farmer? I mean, he has a hard worker. But Abel was what? Shepherd. No soft life, not too much to do. But the rough guy was Cain. And so, it happened to be, now, this is where you're going to hear a lot of people talking about that. Where did God, did the Bible say God asked to have offerings? When you read Genesis 4, where God said he wants offering from them? We didn't say that. However, the Bible said, the text said, they happened to, to offer two offerings. One from Cain, one from Abel. Now, Abel was what? A shepherd? What did he offer? A lamb. Now, what really did he offer in the lamb? If you read the text, the fat portion of the lamb. We'll come to that. What Cain gave? Yeah, he gave his fruits, what he was doing. But the text suddenly said, God accept Abel's sacrifice, and he reject Cain. Now, here's a question now. This is where the, the, the lesson, what was wrong? What went wrong? Yes, sister. Uh, can you, okay, one minute, you're going to have the, the, the mic, if you don't mind, to hear your sweet voice. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. 
That was the sin of disobedience, and that is want to do your own thing. When God tells you what to do, you don't want to do what God says. You want to go your own way. And this is what happens when we disobey, and we don't follow what God says. Thank you very much. But can I wait, hold that? Hold, 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 hold the mic again. Where did God tell them what to do? Sorry, God, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> God didn't tell them what to do, but God showed the parents what to do, and the parents tell the children what to do. Ah. Yes, yes. Because what did Abel offer? Abel offer a lamb, so he there, must have known. There's right? something else here. The first food, the yeah. first. Yeah. So some, now, there are two brothers coming from the same house, right? How come Abel could do that and Cain didn't do it? Because they, mu because they must have known. Because for, Cain to, for Abel to do it, he must have known from his parents. Yeah. For he to, because he offered the perfect sacrifice, so he must yeah. have known. Cain must have known, but he deliberately did not want to do it. Yeah. Cain, uh, when you read the Spirit of Prophecy, it says that Cain taught that God has dealt harshly with his parents. I don't know if I'm going ahead. <laughs> no, good. it is true, but good, good. Yeah. That's good, good. Because I have another question to ask you then, which is true. Now, it's interesting to see there are two boys, raised from the same house. You want and to say I something? Have, I just want to ask a question. Yes. Since it wasn't shown where it was asked for the offering, to what purpose was the offering? Ah. What was the purpose of the offering? What was the purpose of the offering? Somebody wants to answer that? Okay, there we go. Okay. So in show, it, when you remember Genesis three fifteen, yes. right? When he said, "I would bruise the thy heel, the, they'll yes. bruise thy heel and they will crush the head of the serpent." Yes. So when they die, they had to Jesus coming to die for them, right? And they're showing uh, they belief in what Jesus is going to do for them. So every time they do that sacrifice, they remember that Jesus is going to die for them. Yeah, right. So Now, they may not call him Jesus, but we say that seed yeah. will come. So yeah. keep it in that context. That seed will come to crush the seed. That's what they were doing. Mm. However, a um, lot of people expect, expect, uh, well, speculate. There we go. What happened, what, was wrong, what went wrong with Cain? Because, here is something I'm going to say here. The offerings, and listen carefully here for me, please. The offering Cain offered, it wasn't bad. Nothing was wrong with it. All right. Because, you only go further, there is an offering they call what? Thanks offering, and there's one they call sins offering. Because God will say, the, because the Bible says the fruit could be the grain, whatever he offered there. So, in a sense, Cain didn't do that bad by offering what he did. Now, work with me here. Abel decided to offer the sin offerings. Cain decide to give whatever he has. But the, the problem was the attitude behind the offering. Mm -hmm. The attitude. Because see, Abel offered a sin's offering. He knew for the remission of his sin, he realized, he realized he depended on God. And he offered God that because that's what his parents told him to do when you sin. Because you remember when God, when Adam and uh, sin, they had a piece of uh, a, uh, leaves they put in front of them, and what God did, he killed an, obviously he killed an animal, and they gave them the skin of the, uh, the hide of the animal. He, he, he sacrificed the animal to show Well, sacrifice it, okay, sacrifice it. But Cain then came, he offered something which the Bible didn't condemn. But Cain did something. When you are come to church, you're offering a sacrifice. What's the motive behind that? When you come to church on Saturday, when you pay your tithe, 
You're preaching the gospel to people. What's behind your head? Why are you doing that? You see, remember Cain's name was possessing, acquired? Basically, he said to God, I'm doing you a favor. A thinking offering. That thinking offering, he said to God, I'm doing you a favor. I bring that for you. We see, I possess everything. I got everything. So, you remember the guy at, at the temple? When he was praying, he said, I'm not that, I pay my tithe. I don't work on Saturday. I do everything well, and I'm not like that publican there, that guy there sitting there, I'm sure he's seen every day. It's not good. I don't know how he ended up here. But me, basically, I'm doing a favor, God. I'm coming here to tell you how good I am. So we are, basically, can make himself same level with God. That thank offering, it wasn't so much to thank God. Basically, he wanted God to say to him, but you know, you're lucky. I brought you those things. You're lucky. Because I don't wish, I don't really, I wanted to do that, but I'm God too, because this is what happened here. You see, the devil, I want to be like God, and this is what happened to Cain. It wasn't so much the offering, because we, a lot of us, we grew up with that idea that was the problem with the offering. But the problem was with Cain himself, his attitude. And so, brothers and sisters, you remember in the Bible, he said, God said, I don't want to hear your prayers. I don't want your sacrifice. Because you are an abomination to me. Why? Because your life doesn't match what you're doing. Your attitude, your understanding. Yes, you gave me all those things. And God said, that you upset me when you're praying to me. Imagine God said, I don't want to hear your prayer. I don't want to hear anything from you anymore. Because your life, what's coming out from your mouth, your life doesn't match it. And as a Christian, and I'm praying God, I'm talking to myself too. I wish for all of you. So your life to match your beliefs. If somebody sees me outside, whether I know him or not, you will say, Ben, that man there is different than, than somebody else. Can we do that? And this is at that time your sacrifice will be acceptable to God. Otherwise, brothers and sisters, we are wasting our time. You become a king. Because God doesn't need your sacrifice, really. God doesn't need anything from you. He's the author. He gets everything. You're doing that for him because to thank him for what he has done for you. You thank him for changing your life. He's thanking him for making you a new boy, a new person. But not the other around to say to God, hey, you're lucky. I'm going to give you my tithe. Because I could have done so many things with it. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Brother Ben, in this story too with Cain and Abel, it brings out the worship, you know, how we worship God. And even up until today, we have people want to worship God the way they want to do it, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, when God have it clearly in his word, how we should come to him, when we should come, you know. And I believe that's the problem that we have. It's always between two... Um, choices and the legacy of Cain like I said when I was up there none of us want to have the legacy of Cain of going hmm. against God and yeah. doing what we want and actually telling God you lucky I'm even coming you know yeah. Yeah. thank you now Abel himself then brings the offerings to God because he relies on God mm -hmm. for that blessing mm -hmm. you see true worship is, is expressed by obedience. Amen. True worship is expressed by obedience. That's what God wants from us. Yes, the, uh, those things will come to paying your tithe, coming to church. Yes, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't obey God, this thing doesn't mean, don't mean anything. Mm. And so, the problem is, sometimes, you know what we do? You say, oh, my sins are that bad. See, that, you, you bad. But my sin, uh, it's, not, it's not that bad. 
we always find excuses for ourselves when we sin, when we do something bad. But for the other people, but you want to, we want to just uh, throw the law, the book at him, at that person right here. And we become, because of that, with that kind of attitude, we become flippant about worship. Because when we come here, you come to worship because Amen. your life match that. And that's kind of a worship God word from us. It's not so much our money, your, your word, but let's do it with inner action. Now, the idea is uh, Abel, Cain was a bit mad. And somebody, I believe, mentioned that here. Cain had a problem. He never accept the condition of his parents, what's happened to his parents. He, he developed that anger. And you remember before even he killed his brother, God was telling him to be careful. God said, be careful, because sin lies. You have a problem, Cain. And I'm telling you right now, be careful, because that sin there, that anger, in you, you are cultivating there, will, will get you in trouble. But he said you could overcome it, but Cain didn't listen. Hmm. And so when God accepts his brother's offering, now this is it, I just said this is the coup de grace, and he decides something has to be done. He was so mad, instead of going to, say, to talk to God to see what's going on, because he has a good conversation with God, he decides one day to talk. Now, I want you to go back with me. Uh, verse 8. Can somebody read that? Genesis 4, verse 8. Genesis 4, verse 8. Okay. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Thank you. Now, some text said, uh, NIV said that this. Now, Cain talked with Abel and said, let's go. Let's go with me on the field. But this is something they add to the text. The text doesn't say that. But the way we read it here, it doesn't make sense. Because he said, what? Now, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field. How did they end up in the field? You want to? Yes. That's from the Spirit of Prophecy in Patriarchs and Prophet. It says, the two brothers erected the altars alike, and each brought an offering. Abel presented an offering from the flock in accordance with the Lord's directions. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Yeah. Flashes came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, but Cain, disregarding the Lord's direction and explicit command, presented an offering only of fruit. There was no token from heaven to show that it was accepted. Abel pleaded with his brother to approach God in the divine prescribed way, but his entreaties only made Cain the more determined to follow his own will. Yes. As the eldest, he felt being admonished by his brother and despised his counsel. Yeah, I said, he said, I don't, want, I don't want to hear anything from you. I'm the first one, I know what I'm doing, so I don't want to hear from you. But in that text, I want his, the text said, uh, uh, verse 8, again, so the Lord said, eh, eh, now I can talk with Abel, his brother. Do you realize what's happened here? Cain was talking to Abel. He was so mad at him. The text in the original doesn't make sense. Somebody said, well, I was talking with Vanessa. And the next thing, the next thing Ben killed Vanessa. Doesn't make sense. But what happened is there is a break of communication, as you said here. Abel was talking with him, and he says, I don't want to hear anything from you. And the communication stopped. Communication stopped. 
And at that point, he was so angry, he couldn't talk anymore to Abel. And the only thing he believed was best to do is to kill his brother. You see, when you let angry anger, when you let hate into your life, you cannot talk. Takes, that thing takes over, and boy, God knows what you could do. And that's why God said, don't let sins lie at your door. This is your soul. Don't let that happen. What, what that mean? You don't sin. For example, if, if you sin today, let me tell you something. If you sin today, you realize it's not, it didn't happen that day. That sin was in your head if you, <laughs> maybe a week or two weeks ago. And when you commit it, he's in your head. You're thinking about it. But you forget about it, you never bring it back. You look at it. You look at it until the devil won you out, and then you commit the sin. You don't commit the sin like today. I'm, you, 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 you never say, oh, I'm going out today, I'm going to sin. No. You don't do that. But guess what happened? In your mind, therefore, what you're watching, what you're reading, has a great influence on you. You never know, because that was, <laughs> now she's listening to my wife, she's going to get mad. Last night she told me, she said, be careful what you're watching, because one day those things will come out. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, also, see, I also see where he was so angry with God as well, but the fact he couldn't catch God. So he also um, bring out that angry to uh, um, uh, anger. To, yeah, he passes on somebody he, he else. He on somebody yeah. else. <laughs> and and that's, that's, that's how the devil works as well. Um, we, we find in, in, in Genesis that, you know, um, he, he's out to get God's people just the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, because he, 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 he can't catch God as he would like to. So he, would, he, he tried to get you wherever he can get you. Yeah. Now, that does something. The question is, why didn't God stop? Why God didn't stop Cain from killing Abel? Why? There is something they call free will. See, remember what God said to Cain before? He said, be careful. Because that sin there, that anger you have on you, one day he will catch with you. So, but you could overrule it. And Cain just decide not to listen. And that happened. Free will. Free will. But God did his best, so to speak, to prevent him to do that. He told him. Sorry? By, by, thank you very much. By warning him in advance not to do that. But you and I, we have that. We have the word of God right now who is warning us. But it's up to you and I to take it or to leave it. Yes. Before you is good and evil, but choose good. He's saying hmm. the same thing to yeah. us today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, You realize something. God's grace, forgiveness, is there for us. Mm -hmm. But there's something else they call consequences. You realize God could forgive you, but you still have consequences. The consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The consequences is there to remind you never to do that. <laughs> to do it again. So that you know consequences will keep doing it. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Sometimes I remember when, when I, you know, back home in the Caribbean, our parents, okay, they're quick with the twitch, eh? So, I mean, you, you smile badly, but you get it. I mean, just, you know, and I always said, man, if my parents was living right now, both of them would be in jail for 100 years <laughs> for child abuse. And I believe everybody from the Caribbean will testify to that. Okay. Our parents will be... <laughs> Now, looking back, I could see how bad I was. I said, yeah, thank God. But I'm telling you, those guys don't fool around with you. I mean, you, you look bad. You are in trouble. And my dad used to say, 
I get you after the Sabbath. And I said, well, how could you, how could, then as I was getting a little bit older, I said, well, how could you worship God and then after that you're going to hurt me on Saturday? <laughs> and you know what he said? Never mind. I ask for forgiveness, but you're going to get, I'm going to get you. <laughs> consequences, consequences. And so Cain happened, there's going to be some punishment here. What kind of punishment God gave to, to Cain? What was the punishment? Sorry? The punishment was to banish him. He banished him. Sorry? Yeah, but the thing is, you realize something. When God asked him what's happened, where is Abel? What did he, what did he say? Now, he didn't say he didn't kill him. He didn't say that. But he said, but there is, there is something there interesting. This is what they call, emotionally, you're supposed to be looking after your brothers and sisters. Yeah. And the guy said, hey, listen. Yeah. I don't know. He's a big man. Why are you asking me for him? Why don't you go and fight him yourself, basically? That's what King was saying to God. He's a, he's a big man, so go and fight him. Now, did God want to know, ask that question, really? No. Same thing happened with, K, uh, with uh, Adam and Eve. He said, why, where are you, why are you hiding? Uh, something here interesting is, when we sin, brothers and sisters, God wants you to tell him what's happened. Now, there's nothing wrong to say to God, I sin. Forgive me. But try to tell God exactly what you've done to see what's, what, what will be the problem here. Try to describe to God what you've done to see how bad you will feel <laughs> about that. This is a tough one. To kneel, to say to God, instead to say to God, oh, please forgive my sin today. Instead to God, no, today I was speaking bad about my brother. Today, this is what I have done. And that's what God wanted Adam and Eve and Cain to say. To recognize, to say, no. Where's your brother? Oh, God, I'm sorry. Wow, I'm sorry. I killed him. God wanted to hear, to hear, want to hear from you and I. What, was, what is the problem with you? What that a struggle you're having? It's not so much to tell you I'm having struggle. But what type of struggle we're having? This is that individual. And guess what? Nobody will hear you. Only you and God will know. But tell him. Tell him exactly what's happened. Put, and then you will see how contrite you will be when you're telling God exactly what you have done. And so, yes? do punish him, he can see that he's just in yes. what he do. Yeah. And so, but then, can you really hide from God? Can we hide ourselves from God? Where can we go to hide from God? Can't. So one can say, okay, I'm going to hide myself there. What, that, what does it mean? You know what that means? God, thank you very much, but I'm going to see the way I am. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. I don't want you anymore. I'm out. That's it. Amen. That's a text I wanted to find out. Yes. Your sin, the separation between you is your sin, my sin. And so one king said, I am out. And he's saying to God, basically, I don't want you. I'm going to see the way I am. Now, here's the thing. I believe last week I said that here. No, not me, but I sent the te uh, things on this. Uh, sin will take you farther than you want to keep to go. Let me say that again. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. And cost you more than you want to pay. 
Now, do you think Adam and Eve would have think when Eve was eating the thing, so that was going to happen? He's going to have kids, and one going to be a murderer, and then going to have a deluge. The people are going to be so bad, God has to destroy the whole generation. You see what sin does? Sin will never, what you think, you're okay. But the devil say, okay. No, it's a mirror. Everything will be fine. You could cheat. You could do this, you could do that. You will be fine. But no, 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 brothers and sisters. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Yes. The Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Yes, Hebrews, yes. And to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. Yes. Amen. Would the punishment still be that punishment if when the question was asked of Cain, where is your brother? And he fessed up and he's sorry and truly repentant in his heart. Would he still have received that punishment? Good question. If Cain has confessed, but we're talking here about consequences. I, believe, I don't know what, because the Bible doesn't say, and we don't know. Now we are speculating. I believe there's some consequences when you sin. There's some consequences. God will forgive you. But there's all in it. And I have a good friend of mine. He did something. And I had to go. He, didn't, he said, how could that happen to me? I said, you are a human being, brother. That's why you have Jesus there for you. And my friend, my brother, never accept. He committed that sin. He couldn't believe he did that. I said, yes, you are a human being. He never want to accept the grace of God. Yes, brother, go ahead. Yes. My dear sister asks um, if the punishment or the consequence would have been there if he had probably confessed. I believe it would have been there because um, when you read First Chronicle 21, when David, when you started that chapter, it said Satan provoked David to sin against God with Israel. I don't know if you remember when um, oh, yeah. David number. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we did that about... Yeah, a few called, months yeah, ago. Yeah, count the, yeah. yeah. And the Lord, David asked for forgiveness, but the Lord gave him three consequences. The Lord told him, you can be hunted by your enemy or famine, or you can be dealt with by me. And David said, Lord, I would prefer I to fall into your, your hand because yeah. I know if I fall into your hand, you will have mercy yeah. upon me. Yeah. Yeah. And the consequence did come. The Lord take, took out about 80-something thousand of them for that sin, one yes. sin. Good point, and thank you. David looked at it and said, Lord... I would prefer you have dealt with me and my father's house rather than killing these innocent sheep because they didn't do anything. Yeah. It was him who caused that sin. Thank you. So It, it, it might look very different then. No. no but it see, might look in terms of the punishment. David said, I'd right? rather fall in, in your hand because God is compassionate. Maybe the consequences could have been less because I know in my own life things... They say, well, God will really help me there, my friend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, it could have been, mm -hmm. could have been worse. It could have been much worse. It could have been worse. Brother Ben, it, it, um, the consequences come but with mercy. Yeah, with mercy. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mercy Amen. And strength to go it's through it. That you wouldn't yeah. get to go through the consequences. That's but right. But Brother Daniel yeah. rightly point out, it comes Amen. with mercy. And we're going to see that in Cain here. So God said, oh, brother, okay. Yeah. And God said, okay. Cain said, okay. Here's my problem. Now, you see what happened? You see when people think they're, they're strong, can say, hey, 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 God, please, they will kill me. Now, you finish to kill your brother, now you're afraid somebody will kill you? <laughs> so what? Sometimes people think that, but when it comes for them, suddenly the weakness, he realizes, he says, hey, God, please do something for me. And God, grace, brothers and sisters, said, okay, I'll do something for you. I will put what? A mark on you. You see, even there, even there, God is merciful. Amen. And so, Cain's legacy doesn't have to be yours and mine. Because God said, I'm here for you. I will put a mark on you, a mark of grace. But why not, if you're willing to come to accept me, I will forgive you. I will restore you. As a matter of fact, I will make you a new creature. I will make you a new person. That old Ben will be no longer that Ben. 
When they see you, people will say, whoa, what's happened to Ben? And this is what, now this is what that seed, the legacy of the seed of Christ will do for you and I. Now, Adam and Eve, according to Sister White, I believe, they say that he will see the full consequences of the sin when he, at the end of the day, because the guy will be maybe 10 times taller than all of us, and he's going to see we're all sitting there like that. Yeah. And so say, whoa, this is the consequences of sin. We never know. I think he got to see it every day because when he saw the plants dying, he got to see it. When he see Lamech and all these people doing all these evil things, he got to see a lot of what he did. Yeah. And something happened too. As the consequences of sin is, Lamech came, he did worse than his great-grandfather, whatever it was for him. And then also the lifespan You see, you never know what's going to happen when you sin, when you don't really stay with God. Because that sin will go. That's why God said, don't. I don't want to give you an explanation what's going to happen to your life. But one thing I'm telling you right now, don't let sin lie at your door of your soul. Don't do that. Don't, don't mule about sin. Don't do that. Don't play with the devil. You can't. Because the devil is a lion. It's going to devour you. And therefore, stay with me. Stay with me. And we know, even though we don't see the future, brothers and sisters, but we know the future is clear because the battle is won. We are struggling right now, but we know it's going to win. So why don't we be, instead of Cain legacy, be on Jesus, the seed legacy, which is salvation by grace, which is salvation where Christ right now is preparing place, John 14, is preparing place for us. So where is where Christ is? This is you and I will be. But the only thing we have to do is to accept Him, and then He will help us to fight. He will help us to overcome the devil. So may God bless you all. So don't let Ken legacy threaten you, frighten you, because there is a better one, a powerful one, the legacy of Christ, and this is what He wants to offer you. Happy Easter to everybody. I just had one question. Oh, okay. Uh, just because it says here in Psalms 51, uh, verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, that will not despise. So had Cain gone to him after he'd slain his brother with a broken and contrite heart, part of the reason why he was so distraught in the first place is because his offering had not been accepted, or his sacrifice had not been accepted. But this is saying what the sacrifices of God are. So had he gone to him after he'd slain him? Oh, yeah. And if that's the only thing that Amen. was keeping him from doing it, had... And another question I had was, with the offering of the lamb, did they know um, to slay it, or was it offered alive? Well, to slay, now, good point. The Bible is, is doesn't say specifically at the beginning, but we know somehow there's a lot of things being said, because as I said to you, Genesis is a compressed book, okay? From chapter 1 to 11, almost 2,000 years, there are a lot of things Moses didn't put there because they won't have any place for it. But you could read between the lines. So God sacrificed that animal to, to, to give uh, Adam and Eve okay, the, uh, the cover. And so that legacy went to them. They know what to do when they sin. They knew it. They knew to slay the lamb. Oh, yeah, they know it. They know it. Because, see, then... Because at the end of the day, God also later on gives a specific explanation. Yeah. Because there is something, if there is no blood, there is no forgiveness. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So that thing was said already. So again, sorry for, I know we closed already. So thank you very much for giving us that time to talk. But remember. Don't let sin lies at the door of your soul. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for you. And he will give you that, that strength to overcome it. May God bless you all.